Good afternoon and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me on this WEX Masterclass in partnership with Panasonic Lumix. My name is Russell Kent Nichols and I'm a videographer based down in the southeast in Kent. Now, primarily I shoot weddings and as much as I would have loved to have taken you along to behind the scenes of me shooting a real wedding, uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, the last 12 months have been a little bit let's say up and down um, in terms of, of shooting real weddings. So I wanted to talk to you today about some of the best practices that I do that have helped me grow my wedding videography business over the last few years, but also to take you behind the scenes of a couple of recent commercial shoots that I've done, one being a music video um, and the other being the advert for Panasonic's latest mirrorless camera, the Lumix S5. So I wanted to show you some behind the scenes and kind of um, the thought processes and storyboards behind those two shoots, as well as offering you some advice. So if you're looking to get into wedding videography, I'm going to give you some tips that have helped me to, to grow my business from sort of camera settings to to social media strategies um, and also to talk to you a little bit about my favorite features of these cameras as well. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to Panasonic and Wex for having me as part of this masterclass. I've been shooting on Panasonic cameras since 2016 actually. I started with the G7, um, then moved on to the GH5 and the GH5S, that was their Micro Four Thirds range. Um, and then more recently, I've moved over to the S series, which is their full frame line. And now I'm shooting on the S1, I'm shooting this video on an S1, and then more recently, I've added the S1H2 to my bag as well. I pretty much never shoot without a gimbal, so I'm using both the Ronin S from DJI and the DJI RS2. Um, something else that I never shoot without as well is an external monitor. So uh, here I've got the Atomos Ninja 5. What I love about those as well is because I'm a huge fan of quite strong color grading, being able to load my LUTs uh, in real time on the monitor is really handy for setting my white balance and exposure. Um, it's also really nice as well because when I'm shooting for a client, I can actually show them, uh, give them a, a rough idea of what it's going to look like in post-production as well directly on the screen. Lens-wise, I'm a huge fan of Sigma art lenses. Um, like a lot of, of wedding videographers and photographers, I think they'll agree that in terms of the image quality and value for money, Sigma lenses are definitely the way to go. Um, what I love about the Panasonic cameras as well is that you can actually adapt a, a lot of other kinds of lenses too. So with the Sigma MC21 adapter, you can mount Canon lenses. So if you're moving over from Canon and you're looking to try a mirrorless solution, then you can actually adapt those lenses to the S series too. Then more recently, like I've been trying to get into more cinema style lenses and you know, I'm looking at possibly investing in a set of, of proper cinema lenses. Um, recently, I just bought the Helios lens, which is actually a vintage lens from Russia. Um, and I've just adapted that with the, the, the Sigma adapter there. And this is a, a Canon EF mount. Um, and then with the DJI RS2, I've got the focus motor on there. And then I've got the 3D focus module, which is actually an autofocus motor that works with a LiDAR sensor. Um, considering that this is a fully manual lens with no electro electronic communication with the camera, it, it works really, really well. I actually use this lens um, pretty much for all of the, the advert for Panasonic's S5 camera, so I'll show you a little bit of that footage later on as well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about these cameras later on, uh, but for now, let's talk a little bit about weddings. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you've got any questions at all about any of the gear that I use, any of my settings, just let me know in the chat below. I'll be watching along live with you and I'll do my best to, to answer them. I do apologize if the sound is a bit echoey in here. This is my kitchen and there's a lot, a lot of hard surfaces. But anyway, so let's talk about weddings and I wanted to tell you a little bit more about how I got started in the wedding industry. So I think like a lot of creatives in the wedding industry, I started off shooting a wedding video for a friend. Um, that was their, their wedding gift from me. And the year later, I shot another wedding video for a friend and just, just really enjoyed it and being able to give them something that they would have forever. Uh, from there, it sort of spread locally word, by word of mouth until I was um, set, setting up a website and, and taking bookings from people that I didn't know. Um, from there, it 
I had the opportunity to shoot abroad in Santorini as part of a, a wedding shoot. Um, and that allowed me to have a lot more creativity over the, the type of shots that I was getting and really express myself with, with color choices, angle choices. And I think that was the point at which I felt that wedding videos were, were really changing in terms of what people come to expect traditionally from a wedding video. So I think now there's a huge cinematic influence probably coming over from America where they've had a cinematic style for quite some time. I think traditionally when people think of wedding videos, they kind of, they envision this two hour long, shaky um, video shot by their uncle with a zoom camera on, the, on their shoulder or something. But wedding videos these days are absolutely nothing like that whatsoever. There's lots of different styles involved. Um, one popular option being sort of the dark and moody artistic style. I would describe my style as more sort of upbeat and fun, um, lots of laughter, lots of colors, really smooth motion. As I said earlier, I shoot everything on a gimbal. Um, so I really like to create like parallax movements and yeah, just get really creative with angles and ultimately just have a lot of fun. One of the key things to remember if you're just getting started out as a, as a wedding videographer would be to offer to shoot the weddings of your friends, family, cousins, anybody you know, just to, to get the practice and understand the flow of a real wedding day. I think in this industry as well, definitely who you know rather than what you know is really important. So make sure you make those connections with the photographers that you're working, any venues and wedding planners as well that can put you forward and recommend you for those um, for the, the types of clients that you want to shoot. Another thing that I think people forget about as well is actually being able to use social media to show your personality. So I try and show a lot of behind the scenes of what I do, also making sure that I show a lot of my personal life as well. I think that adds to the relatability and I think being in the wedding industry as such a personal service that we offer directly to our clients, you know, we're capturing the, what is possibly the biggest day of their life. I think using social media as a way of your clients being able to get to know you is, is really helpful um, as a marketing strategy and making sure that you're you're attracting the right clients for you. It's really important to be able to book clients that are on your wavelength um, and making sure that you're you're a good match for each other. I think that's another thing that, that's really important and something that you can do for free using social media. And I know I've spoken a lot today about the cameras that I use and they shoot in 4K and 6K, but if you are new to wedding videography, I think the biggest and best investment that you can make would be in lens choices. I favor the 50 millimeter lens, um, f1.4. I think that gives a really nice creamy background blur. Um, shooting sort of wider on like 20, 24, it's not really for me. I think that when you shoot on say a 50 mil or above, the kind of compression that you get with a prime lens as well, um, really adds to the, the romance and the, the cinematic look. So yeah, if, you, if you're just getting started and you're still shooting on a kit lens, definitely worth upgrading to a cheap nifty 50. I think that's gonna make a lot of difference to the look of your wedding videos. Over the last year, I've done a lot of what's called styled shoots, and these are essentially fake weddings that are, are, are set up by either a photographer or a planner or a, another wedding supplier. And these are great portfolio building pieces, so you get the chance to, to shoot that day. Um, and then you're both, you're, you're not only giving that, that video content to the suppliers involved, but you can also use that to market yourself. And I always say that in terms of the, the types of clients that you want to attract is you need to be able to, to show those clients in your portfolio, whether that be your website or your Instagram, you need to be able to show them um, content that they can use to imagine themselves in those videos as well. So if you want to shoot at, say, um, barn style venues or hotel style venues, you need to add that into your portfolio. So styled shoots are a great way of showcasing your skills and attracting the clients that you want. 
So good morning everyone. Uh, today I'm doing my first wedding shoot of 2021 and I'm here at Chatham Dockyards. Um, I wanted to take you behind the scenes and show you what we've got, we got up to today. Um, what's really exciting as well is that I actually designed part of the set and my friends Roxy and Ed from the Little Wedding Warehouse have, have brought it to life. So really excited to show you that. Hi, I'm Roxanne from the Little Wedding Warehouse and today we're building a lightning bolt installation out of copper pipe and LED strips. So it's really lightweight and easy to transport um, and I think it's going to look amazing when it's done. It's so exciting to see what it looks like in situ after just designing it in Photoshop and seeing it come to life is just amazing. And it's just really simple, made of copper pipe attached together and then an LED strip. Um, we wanted to have some really organic, natural looking foliage, so Rebecca Yusuf from Lilac and Lace Floral Design has bought some amazing pops of colour for both the tablescape and also to give a bit more of an atmosphere and soften the edges of the, the LED strip there. So we're just setting up the tablescape now and I'm going to show you how I shoot the table. Obviously being inanimate objects, the, the flowers and the, the cutlery and the place names don't really move so much. So how I tend to shoot this is I like to pick an area that I'm going to focus on and then with my gimbal I squeeze the trigger to lock it and then I just gently move my the upper part of my body and shift the stick on the gimbal either left or right in the opposite direction to which I'm moving and this creates like a parallax effect. So I just shot the tablescape and the, the couple are just getting ready. Um, so I'm shooting on the S1H with the DJI 3D focus module as well. Um, shooting in, in 6K RAW. So really looking forward to seeing how I can play with the results in post. Okay, so we are now in the covered slip, which is this amazing light space. Um, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to get some couple portraits. So we've just come over here and as soon as the light starts to, to dim outside, we're gonna go back and take advantage of the LED um, lightning installation because I think that's gonna look perfect at dusk. So there you can see the, um, the Helios lens just mounted with the Sigma MC21. Um, because I like to save my settings that I know that I'm gonna shoot in as, uh, as custom menu options. So C1 for me is pretty much just a 5.9K in V-Log and that is shooting in 10 bit at 25 frames a second. I don't know how accurate this is gonna be, but with the Atomos, I love being able to preview it with my LUT as well. It really helps when I'm looking to white balance. Although in RAW, you can actually change the white balance in post, so it's not so much of a, a big problem now, but yeah, it's looking really good. So I'm just gonna turn on the 3D focus module now. And the green light on top shows that it's on. Um, and look, I'm just gonna put my hand, you can see that focus motor, focus motor working. Okay, so we've been shooting for five hours now and I've still got 40% battery on the camera. Um, gimbal is like, still got most of its battery left as well. So that's another thing I love about these cameras is the, the battery just lasts pretty much all day. So I think I'm only gonna need to change battery once and yeah, we'll be done. So because it's quite bright up in here, um, I'm gonna drop my ISO down to 640, which is the minimum that I can shoot on Vlog. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the 3D focus module and I'm gonna try and do some push-ins with the manual lens and see how it comes out. It looks beautiful. It looks really, really nice. Cool, so I'm recording now, so I'm just gonna make my way around you in, a, in an arc. God, that looks good. So the 3D focus is working really well. It's just keeping you perfectly in focus, which is kind of good. Oh, it looks so nice. This lens just, it, it's like a vintage, vintage lens. So it just keeps everything. It's got like a certain creaminess about it that I really love. Now, um, I'm just gonna do the same shot again, but I'm gonna try and walk really gently like this, 
um, just so I can kind of stay steady and hopefully this is going to keep you in focus so I just want you to do the same position again for me um, both smiling as well so it's working so far right and just um, stand even closer together for me so your toes so Helen your feet are kind of in between Ed's shoes that's it perfect right I'm gonna go in now that's it it's keeping in focus amazing oh yeah that's perfect so nice it's just crazy to think that this lens that doesn't have any electronic communication with the camera at all is perfectly staying in focus the whole time the only thing that could go wrong is me falling over beautiful i'm gonna come around this side <clears throat> it's working so well so this is the first time that I've used this focus system in any kind of wedding shoot but yeah it's working really really well and Helen if you can look to my camera when I say okay I'm gonna say I'm gonna count down three two one now that's amazing cool three two one let's go and then pull in a little bit closer to each other that's amazing. Cute. Cool, that's great. Okay, so that's a wrap that we've reached the end of the day. Um, it's been amazing to be back shooting and this is my first wedding shoot of 2021. So yeah, a little bit nervous at first, getting back into the swing of things, but super chuffed with the results. The Helios lens and the S1H looked really cinematic. Um, what I saw on the monitor, it's looking really great. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look and thanks for joining me on this behind the scenes. Also, given the situation that we've all been in over the last 12 months, you may be wondering how you can build your wedding portfolio content. One thing that I would recommend is to check out a workshop and a workshop is a great place for videographers and photographers to get the chance to shoot a, a mock wedding um, and you'll be able to make new friends, learn new techniques and skills and come away with loads and loads of wedding content which you can then add to your portfolio to help attract your dream clients. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I would have loved nothing more than to take you with me to a real wedding, show you behind the scenes of a real wedding, how I work with my couples and how I work throughout the day. Uh, 
Unfortunately, that's not something that's possible right now. So what I'm going to show you instead is some behind the scenes of the Panasonic S5 video that I shot working with Panasonic um, and also a little bit of how I storyboarded and planned a music video for an artist named Jack Howitt for his latest single, Runaway. So planning and storyboarding isn't something that I would normally do at a wedding. Generally with live events, it's not something that you can, you can plan. Um, and with weddings, they do generally follow a similar sort of timeline throughout the day. But when a Lumix representative got in touch with me last month to ask if I would like to shoot the advert for the latest full frame hybrid mirrorless camera, the Lumix S5, obviously I was beyond excited. So they asked me to conceptualize, shoot, and edit a roughly one minute video that captures all of the best features that this camera has to offer, um, whilst keeping it upbeat, exciting, um, and modern. And for me, it was really important to show that all of the features that the camera has to offer, whilst keeping it diverse and showing the camera in lots of different scenarios and people using the camera in different ways. Because the advert was gonna be pushed out on social media platforms to existing Lumix users, but also people that are maybe shooting with other systems, it was really important to make sure that given everyone's attention span these days with social media, that the, the key messages and the best footage was in the first sort of 10 seconds. So I decided on five different scenes, five different scenarios, which I then wanted the video to seamlessly transition throughout each scene, um, but also make sure that the end of the video had a, a punchy strap line to reinforce the marketing messages. So given that I had a deadline of just two weeks to, to come up with an idea, to shoot, edit, and deliver this video, um, especially during lockdown, which uh, to be honest with you, organizing models and locations in the best of times is tricky enough. Um, I had to make sure that I planned everything out really carefully. To save on time, I actually got in touch with models and, and people that I've worked with in the past to see if they'd be willing to help out. I also got in touch with a YouTuber that I follow called Sam Holland. Um, he actually was one of the actors in the video, but also he was kind enough to get some behind the scenes footage, which I'm showing you now. So once everyone was confirmed, I created a production schedule, and this was just a spreadsheet that lists the locations, the times, the people involved, but also a list of the shots that I wanted to get. Um, because I was shooting it over five days and I didn't want to have to do any reshoots because there wasn't the time, I had to make sure that everything was ticked off. I would always recommend as well to make sure you overestimate the time that you need to shoot just because things don't always go quite to plan. And because I wanted to transition each scene from one to the next, I had to make sure I considered that as well. And the great thing about videos, is you don't have to do it in chronological order, which is why planning is even more important if you're doing something that's meant to flow together, but you're not necessarily shooting it in that order. So given that it's my job to showcase the best that this camera has to offer, I had to make sure that I shot in the best possible settings. So for this project, I shot at 5.9K internally on the S1H, with my frame rate set to 25 frames a second, and then my shutter speed set to 1 over 50th. If you want to create that cinematic look with realistic motion blur, it's important to make sure that your shutter speed is always double your frame rate, and this is called shutter angle. In the Lumix S series menu, you can choose if you want to set your shutter speed using shutter angle, or if you want to set it manually, and you can actually change that in the settings so that your camera will do the maths for you. I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes of the boxing scene. So I thought I'd start with the boxing scene as I wanted to open with an energetic punch that would really grab people's attention. So I picked a selection of the best features of the S5 that Panasonic had asked me to highlight. And then I thought of different ways of how I could visually demonstrate them. I wanted to create a dark scene to highlight the camera's features like dynamic range, V-log, built-in stabilization, and the fact that this tiny camera can record 5.9K 12-bit RAW when connected to an Atomos recorder. We actually lit the whole scene with just two lights, one set to amber and the other set to daylight. And then aside from two shots out of the whole video, I shot the whole thing on just one camera and one lens. So that's the S1H and then the Helios 442, uh, which is a 55mm 
60 pound vintage Russian lens. So I do have a selection of L mount lenses, which are super sharp and they work brilliantly. But what I love about vintage lenses is their unique character. It's not something that you'll really notice unless you're really looking for it, um, but the individual characteristics of these lenses can add a really nice, like soft cinematic look and they're really good value as well. And they're really easy to adapt to camera bodies like the S series with an adapter. I love the look of the bokeh on the Helios and I love the way that flares, I love the way that it flares when you shoot directly into the light. So that was why I chose that lens in particular. You might also be wondering how I control the focus on a manual lens with no electronic communication to the camera. And that's where the DJI gimbal's 3D focus system comes in handy. Of course, if you're not shooting on a gimbal, then you can always control the focus manually with your hand or use like a, a handheld follow focus. But this, this LiDAR sensor actually detects the distance from the closest subject and then feeds that information back to your focus motor to tell it where to focus. It's absolutely magical. So I use this in some of the shots, but most of the time I was just operating the focus with the, the built-in uh, focus wheel on the gimbal. So in this shot, I wanted to add a cinematic lens flare. So I used this plugin in Final Cut to add a blue flare and then I keyframed it to match the movement of the camera. And then in this shot, which highlights the camera's unlimited recording feature, I wanted to show the, I wanted to show the, the screen display of the camera's LCD. So to achieve this, I just recorded a black screen on the Ninja 5 for a few seconds. And then in Final Cut, I use the screen blend mode, which turns anything black into transparent. Then I used a photo of the monitor and I just overlaid it over the top. Like I said earlier, when I was planning this advert, I wanted to make sure that each scene would somehow connect with the next. And then this next scene is probably my favorite one. This is my friend Rose, and this is Alice, who is playing the photographer. And she is actually a photographer in real life as well. Um, a lot of the photographers I work with on most of my projects and, and weddings and shoots are women. So I wanted to make sure that the ad had an equal split of both females and males using the camera in different scenarios. So I chose this studio in London for its light and airy space. And it was absolutely full of windows and lights. And I wanted that to, to contrast with the dark and edgy lighting from the boxing scene before it. Because the studio was really bright, I wanted to make sure that I captured the full dynamic range of the camera with, uh, and made sure I, I captured all of the data in the highlights. So shooting in vlog gave me so much flexibility in post. If you just have a look at this before and after, and then with my LUT applied over the top, it looks great. So my favorite shot is this push-in shot, which on a, uh, on a manual vintage lens would be practically impossible to keep in focus unless you've got a dedicated focus puller. But by keeping my subject rose in the center of the frame, then walking really carefully back and forth, the 3D focus system just kept everything perfectly in focus. I then stabilized it in post-production and here's a quick before and after. Another shot that I love is this spin transition. So to achieve this, what I did was I set up a light stand in the middle of Alice and Rose, just screwed the gimbal into the top of that. And then using the DJI app on my phone, I set up two waypoints, ending and starting from the same position, which I could then activate from my phone. Because I was using manual focus, I made sure that both subjects were an equal distance from the camera. Uh, then I shot both positions separately and then in Final Cut, I edit, edited them together in post to make it appear seamless. I, can't find my way you know. I actually came across Jack on Musicbed when I was looking for a, a track to use uh, for, a, for a video shoot. When I mentioned him in my Instagram story, um, he saw that and we got talking and I reached out to him and said, hey, if you ever want a music video shot, um, I'd be happy to collaborate with you. And then moving on a couple of months, he actually um, asked me if the offer was still on the table and he needed a video shot for his cover of the Mr. Brightside track, which was part of the launch of the, the PlayStation 5 
advertising campaign. We shot that over the course of a day with just 12 hours notice. And then fast forward a couple of months, he asked me if I would be willing to collaborate with him again on the video for his track, Runaway. He wanted to do two videos as well. He wanted to do the main sort of studio um, radio edit, but also he had a, an, an acoustic version, um, Runaway Stripped, which he also wanted to do a, a separate video for as well. Um, here's Jack to tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the song. Hi, I'm Jack Howitt. I'm an artist, songwriter, music producer. So for Runaway, we decided to come up with this concept. Um, wanted to do it in black and white, wanted it to be like, I was going to wear smart clothes, quite fashion-y. Um, but we, we did film it during um, the lockdown, so we, we, were, we were limited to what we could do. So we couldn't have anyone else in the video, unfortunately. Um, so we just had to have like three minutes of me. Um, but I think we made it work and Russell's, again, like Russell's vision is is just amazing. He just knows exactly what shots to use to make it be interesting, even though it was just me in the video. Then I was also releasing a stripped version of Runaway. Um, so I wanted to make like a, a live kind of version where it was just me playing the piano, but um, lots of like nice shots and everything. And again, Russell absolutely nailed it. We wanted to do a black and white video just to make it more focus more on the the artistic side of things so we found this really cool studio um the cove studio in london the other studio that we used is studio jones in london which was where we shot the acoustic version um the cove is just a pure white cove um it's very wide and so we had a lot of space to play with looks pretty much just like this kind of space. We worked together on putting a Pinterest board together. Um, I would always recommend if you're looking to, to plan a shoot but you're not really sure visually where to start would be to create and collaborate on a Pinterest board and that way you can pin kind of looks that you like. It doesn't necessarily have to be things that you want to directly copy but it's just to, to generate a, an overall vibe of how you want the shoot to, to look and feel so you can pick things like pin outfits, um, locations, poses. Pinterest is a really great resource for putting things together in, on a collaborative basis so we were able to work together on that and both pin ideas that we, we both liked. Again my friends Roxy and Ed from the Little Wedding Warehouse helped us out um, with building a prop so we really like the idea of this, this white plinth um, because the studio was all completely white we wanted to make sure it kind of blended in with the rest of the studio so they created that out of wood and painted it white so it fitted the studio perfectly. I've always been a huge fan of music videos and I think I remember growing up watching the MTV behind the scenes and being fascinated about how they they made these these music videos and when especially from from working on in a studio and working on fashion shoots and things like that you really start to realize how much how different things can look through the camera compared to when you look at them with your eyes or, or through your phone. So being able to see the behind the scenes process of those was always so fascinating. So a few days before I had a look through on YouTube at some music videos from my favorite artists for inspiration and that was really helpful in, in building a rough um, a shot list in the notes on my phone of what sort of shots I was gonna, gonna shoot. I think you don't always know until you're really there on set and with everything in place um, and a lot of the time you do have to improvise as you go so yeah don't panic too much if you haven't got a, a really strong idea of it sort of shot by shot there's always things that you can extra ideas that kind of come to you in the the creative flow as you shoot in the studio all of the lighting was controlled so when you turned off the main lights everything was completely pitch black with the cove being in the background we needed a lot of light to really make it illuminated and even. Um, we actually used two LED panels to light the, the sides and then uh, an LED light with a, a, a lantern shaped softbox to illuminate Jack when, when he was singing and performing. I had the idea to create like a prison kind of scene and for, for that I wanted to recreate the look of, of prison bars with Jack in pitch black under a spotlight. So we actually used a really cheap solution to create that look. I had my assistant and male groomer Storm uh, stand on a chair and hold up my my shower duck board over a spotlight on a sea stand and that's what created the, the bar look. So yeah, it's amazing what you can do 
with very little money to create something that looks effective with lighting. The problems that I faced shooting in the studio was whilst the cove was really wide, it wasn't actually that tall because of the, the ceiling beams. Um, so because of that, I couldn't actually, I couldn't shoot too, too low to the ground and, and shoot up because you'd be able to see the, the ceiling rafters. And to get over that, to, to recreate some, some crane shots, I just used a drone. This is the, the Mavic 2 Pro. A lot of people forget that you can actually fly these indoors fairly easily. You do have to be careful though that you don't get too close to the edge because the draft can kind of draw the drone in and then it will slam against the wall. Um, but they do have sensors built in, so in theory you shouldn't fly into anything. <laughs> I also use this for the, the overhead shots of Jack as well, laying down. Oh God, turned it on. No, no. I can give you some tips um, if you are looking of getting, of getting into music videos. Definitely make sure you know the track inside out. So before you shoot, make sure the artist sends it to you and just listen and listen and listen and that. If you, if you listen to the song, shut your eyes and just see what comes to your mind when visualizing what the video could look like and make sure you write down the notes straight away on your phone just because as soon as you listen to it again, you'll have forgotten what they were. So yeah, listen over and over and over and jot down notes for what you can visualize. On the day, make sure you've got an assistant with you to keep pressing playback and uh, just shoot the same thing three or four times from different angles just so you know that you've got more than enough footage in the edit because there are bits where the artist might miss um, miss the miming of the lyrics or bits that are maybe out of focus or the wrong angle or the slightly wrong body movement so yeah make sure you definitely overshoot um, and just keep doing it over and over it will drive you slightly mad you will never want to hear the song again especially when you've edited it um, and listened to it about 5,000 times but yeah just make sure you've got more than enough content than what you need so my main lens for the runaway video was this Sigma 24 to 35 and this is quite a rare lens in the sense that I've never really seen very many people use it and it is only it's a very very short um, uh, zoom so it's, it's 24 to 35 so you might think well, what's what's the point with that um, but it's a, con a constant f2 aperture and I think it's great for gimbals because all throughout the zoom range it stays um, the same size so you don't need to worry about um, when you're when it's on a gimbal it doesn't extend and throw your gimbal off balance so that was why I chose this lens for most of the shoot putting it at 24 allowed me to get really wide and then I could go to, to 35 just for that tiny bit of, um, of compression also use my other two favorites the Sigma 50 mil 1.4 and the 85mm 1.4. This is a new lens. So I had, um, for most of the takes, I actually had both both gimbals side by side, one with the 85 and one with the 50, and just shot them both at the same time. And that way I had a lot more of like a cropped in version as well as something that wasn't quite so zoomed in. So that gave me a lot of options um, in post for reframing and punching in. So yeah, if you can shoot multiple angles at the same time, that again is gonna give you a lot more flexibility in post-production. So if you shoot Panasonic, you're not gonna be able to find the 24 to 35 in an L mount fit. It's only available, I believe, in Canon EF mount and maybe a Nikon mount as well. Um, so if you're mounting any, if you're mounting any Canon lenses to your Lumix S series L mount cameras, you're gonna need the Sigma MC21 EF mount to L mount and this comes in really handy because it opens up so many more opportunities in terms of lens choice so like I've already said throughout this video I've been using the Helios lens the the Russian vintage one and that has um, an EF mount uh, to that so this just gives me so much more flexibility in terms of using um, Canon fit lenses or other Sigma lenses and also to adapt pretty pretty much hundreds and hundreds of lenses so yeah it's really great option and it's fairly inexpensive as well okay so that is pretty much it from me today um if i can offer you any advice for getting started in filmmaking is don't necessarily 
get too wrapped up in the technical side of things. For me, I've never really had a, a, a great understanding of the technical side of things with waveforms and vector scopes and the, all of that. For, for me, I like to, to try different settings and just see what works. So make sure you have confidence in your ability. Don't undercharge and undersell yourself. Value your worth. Make sure that you're researching and learning every day and just keep practicing. Every time you shoot, you're gonna learn something new that's gonna help you create the look that you want to achieve. Reach out to people that inspire you and learn from people whose work you appreciate and just keep shooting. Don't, don't ever give up and don't lose hope. So yeah, you've just gotta get out, shoot, find what works, what works for you, what lenses work for you, what cameras work for you, develop your own style and have your own unique voice within the, the video industry. If you wanna see some more footage of behind the scenes shot on Lumix, then I definitely recommend to check out Jenny Alice Films' Wex Masterclass, which I've, I've linked below. Don't forget that most of the equipment that I've used throughout my videography journey in the last year is available from Wex's online store. I really hope that you've enjoyed this afternoon and that you've taken away some bits that are gonna help improve your skills as a filmmaker. And if you want to follow my journey, uh, the best place to check out my work would be my Instagram, at Russell Kent Nichols, and also my website, russellkentnichols.com. If I've inspired you in any way to get out and keep shooting, then please make sure you tag me in any content that you post and make sure you use the hashtag Wex Masterclass. So it's goodbye from me for now, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.